Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Fang Mei Luo from Tiffin University. I record this video. It's mainly for Tiffin University students who take the Psychology 250 Social Psychology class with me. And because in this time, uh, because coronavirus, so then um, we are not going to do the person-to-person -person lecture. So uh, I'm create this video, okay? And hopefully you find it helpful. Okay, so even I say this for my student, but if you watch this and you are not my student, it's okay. I welcome you to come into this uh, social psychology world. Okay, so how's everybody? Uh, there have been more days now for these online sections and then you also hear the whole world, you know, more things close, the restaurant already closed, you can only do the carry out, you know, um, and you hear, you know, a lot of movie theater also closed. So when you see this, what do you think? Okay. So the lecture for today, actually is our uh, chapter seven. It's about attitudes and attitude change. Attitudes and attitude change. So I have your lecture actually post in your Moodle. So you will come to post the video if you need it and then and I'll print them out. Or you can just listen to the lecture and then read them later. It's fine either way. Or if you already have that shows you, you can follow along. Okay, but anyway, I want you to enjoy it. And so this very interesting topic and let's kind of talk about it. Okay, now even I don't see you, but I can feel you. So um, if I ask question, we'll come to response. Okay, and we'll come to smile at the screen when you look at me as smiling at you. So hopefully this is also our interaction. Okay, so um, are we change attitude? Like quite often. Okay, let me do a demonstration. So let me do this. Ooh, what you see? What's this? Right? This is mean that person I will mask. Okay, so that is very interesting. When I back to Taiwan on February, okay, since coronavirus already, oh, do I put the wrong side? Let me there. Hopefully, I'm doing the right side. Okay, so I'm supposed to do this, right? So when I back to Taiwan in that time, and actually still now, the whole Taiwanese people. I'm from Taiwan, okay. Whole Taiwanese people wear mask during this coronavirus, okay. It's kind of like, have to, must be. The whole country, uh, they build up a lot of factory, they produce a lot of mask. So uh, hopefully this is one of the way uh, can prevent the uh, coronavirus spread and then to uh, avoid people get caught uh, by virus. But on the other hand, when I back to America, when I do this, okay, people are going to give me a strange look, right? So if you see I walk on the street and wear the mask like this, what are you going to look? What are you going to see? First of all, you may think I'm sick, okay? And secondly, you think uh, the lady is Asian, right? You know, so that show in our um, lecture say, when we say attitude, attitude, what's that word mean? That word mean we evaluation of people, object, and idea. We evaluation of people, object, and idea, okay? And why we need to talk about attitude? 
Because attitudes are important. Why? Because they often determine what we do. They often determine what we do. Okay, so you can see the government in America and government in Taiwan, they have a different attitude, attitude about mask, right? So um, over there, the government, you know, say that everybody wear mask. That have to, have to, must be, right? So actually, their class, they still have class because everybody wear mask, and then professor, teacher wear mask, or student wear mask. And so because their attitude about mask, so that's what they do, right? And so here we don't encourage anything about mask. Uh, and instead we say, you know, everybody stay home, you know, let's do online class, you know. So uh, the attitude of the governor, attitude of the administrator, and they are important for them. And that's also determined what they do, okay? And of course, this all right or wrong. It just everybody have different attitude. Okay. Now, the reason we say this because in this slide, okay, in your next slide, say people are not neutral observers of the world. People are not neutral observer of the world. They evaluate what they encounter. They form attitude. Okay. So let me give you, just look at it. Slide a little bit so you know where are we. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. So people are not neutral observe of the world. They evaluate what they encounter and they form attitude. Okay. So the button here is the definition of attitude. Attitude is evaluation of people, object, and idea. Okay. Okay. So here, you can see. Attitude have a three kind: affective components, a cognitive components, a behavior components, right? And ad affective components will be about what's our emotional reaction toward something, right? And cognitive about your thinking about something, and then what do you do with that, right? So. Let's think about our mask. <laughs> I think it's just very interesting because I'm from another country and I see how people do in other country. And so even I bring this mask here, I hate, I, I seldom wear that because it, I just don't want to make people feel I'm strange. Okay. So um, just think about affective, cognitive, and behavior, right? So affective, like, you know, your emotional reaction when you see something, right? When you um, see the car, when you go to buy the car, are you, if you are feel excited, you know, you may like the car, you may tend to buy it, right? Or when you see the, um, the food you like, you, you, you have that emotion. And sometimes your emotion can change depending on, you know, what happened, right? So for example, right now, um, because the coronavirus, so then when we see, we used to see people say, ha ah, nice to meet you, right? Right now we can say, oh, don't come to me, go, 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 right? We, we will have that um, emotion because that we worry the more people together, more chance we get virus, you know, so then, Right now, sounds like our society now have become like we are trying to distance each other and then for the people to are together that people think it's dangerous, right? So that is somehow the emotional part. So then why you stay home? Because you are afraid of if you go out, you are caught the virus, right? So that emotional part uh, change your attitude, right? So you start to believe, you know, when people get together, that's not a good thing. So you change your attitude about gathering, right? So now they close the restaurant. And again, I'm not saying this is bad or wrong, okay? All right. It just something happened right now, and that's what we have to do. So if we can become, you know, the accept whatever, and then so hopefully 
everything goes on smoothly and so when we you know when next time everything's fine we back to school and now we can hug each other right okay and the second thing about thinking right sometimes you know you change your attitude because you are afraid of something but also sometimes you change something because you think about something right if something you used to think good you do it and then later you don't think that's good so you don't do it. so you change your mind right and also sometimes we change uh depend on we do it okay so if we do it then we start to believe it right and so sometimes your behavior change can lead your attitude change you know sometimes remember in the class we say if we have something we are not sure then we observe and then when we when we observe our behavior finally we do it then you say oh i i do it maybe i can believe it and then you change your behavior right okay so um now we 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 will say what is our affective reaction when you see a the the the, the slide here let me let me show the slide okay they just ask some example here so then for example what is your affective reaction when you see a certain car right you may be exciting you know everybody may have a different interest in about different car right so then some people see a certain car they are so exciting and some people see another kind of car they are exciting right and how about what is your cognitive reaction what belief do you hold about the car attributes right perhaps you admire the hybrid engine that make it one of the most fuel efficiency car you can buy so if you see this so maybe that's why you change you see oh they are safe gas so let me buy it right and also do you go to a dealership and test drive that car actually buy one right so sometimes depend on you may be exciting here but then you don't do anything here just exciting and say oh it's nice right or you say it's nice and then you say oh let me see oh the car actually is a hybrid huh maybe that's something i should take into consideration and then you say oh maybe let me just go to the dealer let me go and and try how they how they how they looks like right so depend on how much you do depend on how much you do okay so let's check see our next slide Okay, so do you ever think about <coughs> where is this attitude come from? Where where do attitudes come from? You see this slide? They tell us the attitude actually our proactive answer that some attitude at least <coughs> are linked to our genes. Okay, do you believe that? Do you believe, if you think about yourself, is do you feel like some of your genes, actually you can trace them back to your parents or your father or your mother or your brother, sisters or your grandparents, right? So that's gene. So then when we talk about gene in the psychology, one thing they like to do is to study about twin. Study about twin, okay? And so they find actually, if you want to find study about twin, you know, identical twin, they are more close, their gene is more close uh, than fraternal twins, right? So then the research show identical twin share more attitudes than fraternal twins okay even when raise them in different homes even they never know each others but they they find the research show they find actually when they are together they find they are similar okay and of course some attitude they are indirectly from your genetic makeup okay so there's something or something about you know 
it would depend on where you live. So we say Jin is about 50%, right? It influences us. Another 50% come from somewhere else. Okay, so when we talk about this, I just cannot help. I need to share with you something. Guess what? Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Yay! Look at this. That's my twin and me. That's my twin and me that get closer. Do you think they are cute? I think I'm cute. <laughs> Sorry, I, I love myself for that, for that pictures. Okay, so I, don't, I think maybe that is me. I think maybe that's me. Uh, because they say my twin very assertive since the baby. See her eye? How can be closer? Okay, see her eye? Look at since that very young age, her eyes kind of like, hey, I'm afraid of nothing. And then I'm here to say, I'm not sure. So you can see. So even my parent didn't tell me which one is me. But I guess based on our personality right now, I think that's me. Okay. So the reason I want to show this, just prove because I'm identical twin. And then our attitude, my sister and I, we have a, a brother. Okay. So actually, I think he's there. Okay. That's our, that's my brother. That's my brother there. Okay, and that's me. And then, that's actually is me. Okay, that's a, that's the the shy me. Oh, sorry, sorry, my computer doing something because my come back. Okay, here. Okay, because I push my key. Okay, so that is a shy me. You can see that, but that's our brother. Okay, and so actually our brother. His attitude, his personality is different, very different from my sister and I. And I. So then I believe um, that's prove the statement there. Okay, I say identical twins share more attitude than fraternal twins. Okay, uh, but we are raised in same family, same place, and but now we are live in different place. But it's funny we both make video like this for our student because she also the professor. Okay, but anyway, so um, even we say Jin is important, okay, but don't forget social experience also very important. Social experience also very important, okay? And then also all, not all attitudes are created equally so then uh, we know is cognitive again affective cognitive and behavior components okay they are you know depend on how many percent they are inference okay so just give you update so that's my twin and me so if you have me as your professor Hopefully, you know which one is me. Which one? Left or right? Left or right? Do I hear something? Okay. Actually, that's me. Okay, that's my twin sister. Okay. So, actually, uh, she majored in history. I majored in psychology. So, I found actually our attitude for some issue somehow a little bit different now um, because she's, I think she become more rational and I'm in psychology. So I think I still have more emotional part, you know, when I talk about some stuff, right? So that's very interesting, right? Okay. Okay. So when we talk about cognitive, this is the definition here. Attitude based primarily on people's belief about properties of an attitude object. Okay, so 
how many of you use cognitive based attitude when you get something when you buy stuff right so uh for example here when you want to buy the car you know if you use affective you can say oh the car is so cute i want to buy it right uh but if you use cognitive based attitude you may concern about how many miles to get gallon does it get you know uh to the gallon does it get does it have side impact your back right so um that is called cognitive attitude right and affective attitude here is depend on your feelings your value on your belief and about the nature of attitude right sometimes we simply simply like a car regardless how many miles to the gallon it gets right um i don't know how many of you when you get a car uh you are based on your 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 feelings okay i think if you i'm real i'm not really good um i didn't know car that much so when i buy the car of course i listen some information but then for me um that feeling actually it's quite important and that's me how about you right so they say uh if aff effectively based attitude do not come from exam the facts where do they come from well they can come from first of all like religion and moral belief so they if you are not from the uh so how do you get your effective based attitude can be your value about religion and moral okay or your sensory reaction such as liking the taste of chocolate you you taste it you say oh it's very good right or um you like the color right you like the design and the last one called conditioning okay hopefully you remember in our psychology what conditioning mean okay so actually i pull back some slide from the uh intro psychology class and so hopefully they can help you review that okay just for you okay so the first one called classical condition okay and hopefully you know it's from pavlov right pavlov okay so what's classical condition mean okay so actually this is the slide i pull out from psychology class okay so you know us's words mean unconditional stimulus so that's mean you don't have to learn to know how to respond so in this one pretty much is middle it's a middle right so middle when you see mebo or mebo sorry mebo right so when dog see the mebo dog don't need to learn to know that's delicious so dog going to have a saliva in in his mouth okay so it's called you are there so it's called unconditional response okay so when you do classical conditioning in first step you make sure the us you put actually really can produce you are okay so now if you put the something nothing to do nothing to do with saliva like a ball we call neutral stimulus okay also we call cs here cs okay so you pair this cs with us and your dog is response you are okay so then every time when you give your dog food you bring the ball and you put the the food inside the ball and then the dog has saliva produce a saliva and then if this for happen for so long then hopefully you don't need to have a c us your ball itself can produce saliva and so that's called cr that's called cr okay so the point is a lot of time we like or dislike something 
it's actually depend on who you pair with. Okay, something you never know, you never learn. And if you come with people, right? So let's go here. Let's think about this. Okay. So for example, I always ask PP student, do you like sushi? Okay. Sushi is such a new thing in America. Even it's very uh, common in my country, Taiwan. Okay. So it's a very new thing in, in America. And then uh, I see a lot of places, they, they, they sell the sushi, right? Now, do you like it or not? And why do you like it? And why don't you like it? Okay. I believe depend on who you associate in the beginning, right? So for example, you go out uh, with friend, right? And the friend that is sushi, right? And then um, they tell you, hey, sushi is so good, so good, so good. And you don't like it. So friend give you um, a piece of another food, okay? And the food actually is uh, very delicious. Then when you eat that food, it's a sushi is come with that food. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of their, com their uh, com combination for a meal, okay? So when you eat that food, then sushi is there. Since the food make you feel so good, and you say, okay, I finished food. I maybe try a piece of sushi. And you try a piece of sushi. Well, because that food make you feel good, the sushi come by. Then, gradually, 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 because this combination may be, because the food is good, so will make you maybe next time, if one time you go there and then the, the restaurant said, well, we run out of food, but we still have some sushi. Do you want some? Maybe the sushi will become your food, right? Another hand, if in the beginning, you never know what's that, and they come with something actually, oh, it tastes not good, right? And so you don't like that food, then sushi come with that food will make you not like sushi. Or, right, so that can be a reason, right? So, um, actually, if you never try, you should try. It's pretty healthy, eat just the, the rice and then with, uh, sometimes they with some eggs, Sometimes there with uh, avocado in here, people like to use avocado, right? And sometimes there with some raw fish, if you don't like it, then you don't have to try it. But I'm not trying to sell sushi, but I believe that's pretty good food. In your life, you may want to try some, right? Okay, so this is called classical condition. Okay, so make sure you know what's CS, what's US, right? What's CR, what's UR, right? Uh, U.S. is something you don't need to learn to know how to respond, right? So, for example, a lot of people like candy, chocolate, right? That for them is, for you, is U.S. And then you will produce you are like saliva, right? Then, if you pair with C.S., C.S. means something called conditional stimulus. That means you have to learn to know how to respond. How do you learn? Just that C.S. have to pair with U.S. When you pair more enough time and every time when you pair you produce you are okay so you 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 have water in your mouth right and then gradually when you when the um the us not appear then cs can directly produce saliva and we call it a cr right now okay so actually this is how we then attitude right that's how we then attitude right so, um, for example, if you um, take my um, research class, for example, okay, you know, some people, they will say, well, <clears throat> I don't like research class, okay. So, for example, you take my class and you like me, okay, you like me. And so, when you see me, you are happy, okay. So then you say, well, she teach research class. I like her. And so you pair me with research class. And then uh, they will make you more likely to accept the class because you know the instructor, right? So then because that, actually, maybe you fall in love with research. 
And later, even I'm not paired with research class, you will say, oh, that's good, that's good. So research class, it original is a neutral, neutral stimulus, right? And then because you pair with something, for example, the, uh, the research class actually associated with statistics. So if you like statistics, you may be more like research. And then another, um, vice versa, right? People, they don't like statistics, actually they don't like uh, research class. Actually, I did a research before about what made people like research or not, okay? I find people, they are very good with uh, uh, the numbers, okay? They are interesting, they are enjoy the statistic, and also they like the writing. They more like this, actually very important factors affect if they like research design class or not, right? Okay, so uh, this is the um, classical condition, okay? Or, you know, here to say, if you, um, you know, like your grandma's pizza, your grandma's food, then whenever you smell that food, you remember your grandma, right? So our attitude about something, even about food, about the car, about the class, about um, even mask. <laughs> Let me show the mask, okay? that actually it's something to do with classical condition right okay now everybody is still if you back to your psychology concept when we talk about classical condition we also talk about another one called what everybody remember start with all start with all operant condition right operant condition remember let me show you the powerpoint right this words operant condition okay so operant condition the phenomena whereby behavior that people freely choose to perform increase or decrease infrequently depend depending on whether they are followed by positive reinforcement or punishment reinforcement Punish, uh, punishment or reinforcement or punishment. So the difference between classical and operant actually is a consequence. It's a consequence, okay? So let me give you this box, okay? If you are a psychology major or you learn intro to psychology, you not strange. This box actually you is familiar, right? And so this is Skinner. Um, she, he created this box called Skinner box. Okay, so what is mouse do? Okay, so he put the, this little mice into the uh, box. And do you see the bar there? All right. So of course the mice don't know what's going on into the box. So then when, when the mice see the bar, okay, the mice push the bar and get the food or get water, okay. If the mice push the bar, get the food, that's mean reinforcement, right? Then of course, if you put the mice back to the box next time, the mice going to push the push the bar, right? For sure, right? But if instead you he they push the bar and they get electrical shock, what happened? I don't think next time you put, you you bring them in, they are going to they are going to to push the bar, right? So this is called upper up up operant condition, okay? So um, the book in our uh, slide talk about you know for little kids, they they are they don't care about who are you from. Right when they see the kid, they want to play with them. Okay, then here see, for example, if you uh, a four years old white girl goes playground and begin to play with every kind of American girl, right, and then the father say don't play with the kids. Okay, then the kids going to form a prejudice or stereotype attitude with that kid. kid from different place, right? So another hand, if the um, 
if the kids play with the girl and the father say, "Hey, come, hey, wh what's your name?" and then they say, "Hey, let's play together," then I think the kids going to uh continue be a friend and then not afraid of people from different uh country, different race or different culture, right? Okay, so this is a summary for this chart. It's summary for this chart, right? So classical condition, stimulus one, right? So let's be, uh, you're smelling your grandmother's house, okay? And then this will be you visit your grandmother and you feel good, okay? So then eventually when you smell that, you will feel good, right? So this is called classical condition, right? And operant condition here is you do something, right? You play with kids, another race, and depend on you got a posit positive reinforcement or uh, punishment, right? So if you got positive reinforcement, uh, your parents' approval, then you more likely to become, you know, you're open-minded, you can get along with people from different area. But if you got a negative, you got your parents' disapproval, then you will start to say, oh my gosh, that's maybe not the right thing to do. And you become too, too afraid of people from different place, right? So you can see, you know, we are easy to change people's mind and depend on what condition you set up for that, right? Okay. Um, so here say, although affective based attitude come from many souls, we can group them into one family. Because what? Do not result from rational examination of the issue. Anna governed by logic and are often linked to people's value so that try to change them, challenge those values. Okay, so actually people can change, people can change depend on um, how much they want to change, right? Okay, so um, Next one is behavior. So I'm going to stop here for now. Okay. Um, so what do you think so far? Do you think that's true? Okay, do you think it's true the uh, the uh, our attitude actually can be changed emotionally, right? And we say the emotional change can be what? Can be your our attitude can be from gene, right? But then 50% uh, from gene, another 50% will be from the uh, social experience, right? Um, so hopefully you find this lesson is interesting. So this is the part one for our um, chapter seven, okay? So then I'm going to stop here and i see you later. So be, stay safe and stay healthy, and I see you soon. Bye-bye.